Hello, I am uh, back on ye olde proverbial uh, bull hickey, <laughs> um, making part two of my Tudor wardrobe. So uh, I started out with a smock as an undergarment and next we're going to be moving on to the kirtle. So a kirtle is the gown that a woman wore over the top of her smock. Uh, for a woman of uh, higher social standing than I don't know, a peasant like me would be. Uh, it's just another underlayer, sort of keeping warmth, keeping protection from your body to your fabulous outer layer, um, another way to absorb sweat. Uh, another, you might have your dress cut to show off your kirtle, so it's another way of looking fabulous and opulent. For more common women, the kirtle is, is the outer layer, so a couple of smocks, a couple of kirtles, and that's that's your wardrobe sorted for the week so that will be uh the next stage if i'm going to be making a tudor wardrobe i've got to have my outer layers all sorted so again uh, i'm using the tudor tailors the queen's servants which details court dress at henry the seventh so this is a very early tudor gown so it's might look a little bit different than things that you're used to if you're used to seeing elizabethan style gowns as we can see in the lovely drawings it looks more, I suppose, dress-like. Um, their example one has fastening down the front. I'm going to be making one that fastens down the side. Of course, some women wore them fastened at the back, and you might think, how on earth did they do that without any help? Um, obviously, they had husbands. Uh, some women would have servants, and there seems to be some uh, evidentiary that's evidentiary evidence that suggests that um, there are plenty of women who just did their back lacing by themselves. I mean, much like women today um, have their own ways of like doing up a bra or something, you know, like you do it at the front and then you scoot it round. I imagine they had their own techniques for doing back lacing without any help. So as before, the book has a, a printed pattern that you photocopy and you print out yourself and this one is going to be a little bit more complicated. The kirtle was just sort of a series of squares and rectangles, and I can draw a square. I went to school. I'm a qualified teacher. I can do a square. Um, this one requires me to do a little bit more serious thinking. So the, the principle is, is that you do a box around the object. Um, you sort of size up the box to how it would be in real life and then you sort of do the points to the points to recreate the pattern piece um that's going to be fun i'm not free good at free handing pattern pieces so this stage is going to be very interesting but luckily my fabrics have arrived so i can talk about them which is the most exciting part obviously uh, i've opted for all natural fibers because the Tudors uh, didn't have unnatural fibres. Um, that oh, wouldn't that be an archaeological discovery for the ages? Um, as much as I will use a sewing machine because my hand sewing is is shocking, I am making sure that all my fabric is as period accurate or as natural something they could get hold of as possible. So uh, first things first, we have uh, plain white natural cotton um i tried getting dead stock fabric for this but i had no luck so i went for my fabrics uh, that well, smell of plastic packaging recyclable plastic packaging uh, so i've gone for 100 percent all natural white cotton for the lining so i was surprised that it had a lining i didn't i didn't think that the kirtle would come with them but uh, according to the records, they do. I suppose it helps add shape. Uh, make sure that your dress is sort of flowing, fitting the way it should do. It has enough volume for what you want, which is good. And I imagine then, if you had... I imagine that you put a lining in that would be removable because then you can just wash the lining without having to wash the, the main kirtle. There's another way of sort of keeping it clean in a way maybe you are being so loud so next up is linen canvas so this is quite obviously it's quite a tough fabric it has a lot of shape it's quite coarsely well not coarsely woven it's, it's nicely done but the aim for this is i i got 
had to get like a ton of this because I didn't do half meters. Is it fits into the into the bodice area, so it gives you shape around your chest, gives you a fitted feeling. I suppose in a way, gives you some sense of support because stays precursor to corsets aren't really a thing. Uh, sort of a thing, but not not like massively. So that goes there, gives you support and shape for your bazungas. I got that from Textile Express. Again, I couldn't find any dead stock or anything like that for the linen canvas, but they're a, a curtain supply store, so they have lots of linen canvas. And then the main event, oh, I'm gonna put my camera there. The main event is the fabric for the kirtle itself, which I'm very, I'm very happy with. Which is this, the color doesn't come out quite right. It's very, I thought it would be lighter, Sort of more reddish when I bought it, but it's come out and it looks very black here. But it's this very dark, sort of dark brownish purple, which is quite lovely. Um, this is from Flamingo Fabrics, and what I've got here is I think there might be some poly you've got on it. Mm. Is uh, it's a wool fabric, so this would be typically used for coats. Uh, now the suggestion in the book was that I go for worsted or a wool fabric and I, I had a hell of a time getting some because I am very poor. Pity. Pity me. Um, and I had to find a wool fabric that was affordable because looking at some of them, uh, some of the ones made by reproduction companies, they're like 20 quid a meter and that's a lot of money because I had to get about six meters of this. I think, yeah, it, I, it's a lot of money and so I, I started scouring around and this was on sale. I can't, can't stop stroking it, it's so soft. It's so soft. Uh, this was, I think, 550 a meter, which is much more reasonable for me. And this will be my kirtle fabric. So studies, records, inventory show that most kirtles are made of worsted, which is a fabric that's more commonly used for suits, but it's a woven wool fabric. So wool is the aim of the game. And the benefits with wool as a outer garment is that it's very warm. Uh, it tends to keep its shape when it's wet. Uh, and wool, of course, is plentiful in England because the wool trade is kind of what made uh, the backbone of England's economy. So wool is very easy to get hold of. It's easy to maintain and dye. And this one, I mean, typically this is a dry clean only fabric, so not, <laughs> not has all, it doesn't have all the benefits of Tudor fabric, but it's, it's soft and it's pretty. So that will be my kirtle. Obviously, woo woo, that's the sound of the sumptuary police. Uh, purple is normally reserved for a more higher class of person. Um, sumptuary laws, for those who are not in the know, were laws governing what people could wear. So depending on your social status and the amount of land you had, the amount of income you had, you could wear or not wear certain things. Um, the problem with these laws is that while there were a lot of them, uh, people tended to not follow them in the slightest. Um, it's very hard to take someone to court for a sumptuary law offence, and you don't you don't get a lot of them on the books. So, my my plain purple gown will uh, escape, I think, the justice of the pieces' ideas or their notice. I suppose if I put it on that outer gown, I can claim that I'm a, I'm a fancy lady. But um, next stage is drawing up the pattern, which I am not looking forward to. It's going to be very hard, but um, this fabric makes it all worthwhile. I waited so long for it, and I'm just happy that I have it now. Hello. As you can see, I'm on the very uh, prestigious workplace of my floor <laughs> and what i've done is i've done you can't still sort you can sort of see the top i've done big boxes in marker pen then i'm going to be notching off key points on the bodice so that i can get a size about it and then i can sort of join them all up with pencil um it's it's very high tech i have a pencil i have a muppets ruler i have a tape measure that has been destroyed by my cats and this is this is how I make everything in my house on the floor. <laughs>
slight uh, disaster. I ran out of pattern paper. The one that I have is it's it's not wide enough for my for one part of my skirt, and I have a whole part of another skirt. So, quick quick trip to my local haberdashery to try and get some more pattern paper and some sellotape so I can try to stick this bit on the end and at least make a bit that's wide enough to do my bloody skirt. <laughs> so I'm back back from from the shop. I have a very I have more pattern paper up there and this is very badly sellotaped <laughs> together. Oh lordy lordy lo <laughs> So, as you can see, I've got all pattern pieces cut out. So I've got skirt back, this is skirt front, uh, bodice front, and bodice back with a with a sleeve here, in case I want to put a sleeve on it. Um, considering I free <laughs> I freehand all these curves, all these curves. Yeah, that's actually looking pretty good. Uh, I'm pretty confident about it. It's looking sharp and ready. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut them out. Oh, you can see my knees there. Uh, cut them in both top lining and thanks, Manjo, and lining fabric and interlining fabric. So I will come back when that is all done, which will take me a long ass time. So what I'm starting to do now is to pin pieces onto my lining fabric and get that ready for cutting out um so i'll pin them in place and then i pin them in place with my, my little pin bitch um <laughs> i shouldn't call her that but um what i do she's got a little girl now um and i will measure out around it because what i have to do is i like, have to add in a seam allowance because the, the pattern pieces are don't include that so I have to add in a seam allowance which I didn't do with my smock which is why it was so tight across the shoulders so hopefully this time things will fit better done over the course of today is I've cut everything out. There's bl blooming cat hair here. Cats have been on them. Look at that. So we have uh, four lots of linings for the skirt. 
two sets of skirts, sleeves, which I'm still not sure how that's going to come together, but that'll be fun. If you hear a noise in the background, it's because I'm leaning on my ironing board. I've got, that's the back of the bodice and the front of the bodice, which has an extra lining of that canvas linen to give it sort of stability and hold, which is not fun to cut. But no, so tomorrow, when I'm, I'm not quite so fatigued, because I've got a really bad fatigue attack right now, um, I'll start putting them all woo, together. Okay, so the next stage is I've got to tack the interlining of the linen canvas onto the wrong side of the bodice front. So I'm just doing we both sides of the bodice. I'm just doing the front at the moment. Uh, I've pinked around the edges of everything just to make it less likely that any threads are gonna fray or get damaged. And now you get to see um, exactly how bad my <laughs> hand sewing is as, I, as you watch me tack. This piece tacked. You can see it's gone even to the beer all the way around. I don't know why it's a bit coming on. Uh, just uh, three more pieces to go. I'll see you on the other side. The next step is so I've interlined all my bodice pieces. So the, <laughs> they're looking like this right now. The next stage is to try is to begin construction. Now, because it's going to be side laced, um, what I have to do is I have to do the front and stop shoulder seams on the front and back bodice pieces. Let's get down and do it. You can see how bloody small my workspace is. I need like a proper working table. So put those uh, right side to right side and we're working with a, a 5 eighths seam allowance. interesting is that you can really feel the weight of that lining. It really does have a kind of a heft to it. Ta -da. It's looking good, so I'm going to press the seams, do the next stage. Now th this is just to show <laughs> what my <laughs> house is, so lining, focus, lining fabric on the ironing board to be ironed and pinned, uh, bodice with lining bodice left uh, completed lining skirt on top of pattern piece, giant pattern piece, sleeves, big pieces of skirt, it just everything is just <laughs> everywhere at the moment and I can't, this is the only way I can logically keep track of things without a sewing room. <laughs> so that's behind the scenes here. Okay, so the next stage is to prepare the skirt elements. So all I've already done is I've pinked pink them all, she's still forever, oh that's so big. And first things first, front and back, the two sides need to be sewn together and then I can begin to sew front to back together, leaving a gap for the side lacing. So this is 
the back. <laughs> I can only tell by the top of the by the top of the, the shape of the top of the skirt. I can't. I'm just looking at it, and it's just reams of cloth everywhere. <laughs> Put this on my dress dummy and we're gonna see how bodice and skirt look uh halfway through okay so we're just about halfway through and this is how things are looking right now the skirt and bodice are not connected at all at this point i i just sort of put it in place with that belt so i can sort of see have a vague idea what it's gonna look like so it does look quite medieval but so there's the bodice linings there lining's not in yet and this is what the skirt looks like together. So I guess there's some people to be saying that Tudors wouldn't necessarily have this big seam down the front. I suppose it depends how it's being put together. You wouldn't see it on those grand portraits because they're how they're made. You wouldn't have that. But I think it's looking, it's looking quite good so far. Next is I'm adding sleeves onto this so next time okay you're not going to turn all the way around fine. So next time we're going to see this bodice it is going to have some lined sleeves in it. Okay so I, I did promise sleeves on the bodice and uh, <laughs> well as you can see there are no sleeves and also I started cutting out the tucking for some insane reason and then was like oh no it's not sewing in place the lining's not sewing in place yet um yeah so I tried putting the sleeves in uh one way and then put the bodice on and the sleeves like they didn't feel right they felt that they were on backwards so I, I was like okay I put them in the wrong way around it's fine you always do this Jess you have so many problems with sleeves so you know it's it's fine we can sort that out it's fine um and then i tried them the other way and the same problem happened so what i'm presuming is i did a very bad job <laughs> of cutting out those sleeves or i just did something wrong and it's fine i put them to one side it is going to be sleeveless it's fine it's fine it's fine so while i after i got frustrated I took my skirt and I sewed it. Ooh, it's so heavy. I sewed it down the side openings uh, to keep it in place, and I tacked it around the top. So I now have a skirt with lining in, which that made up for the frustration of spending all day on those bloody sleeves and them just not working out. So what I'm going to do now is, with this skirt, I'm going to tack the top of the skirt to the bottom of the bodice looking to create a big whole piece and hopefully it doesn't matter that I just undid a bunch of bloody tacking on this bodice because I went I don't need it anymore it's sewn in place no Jess it's not sewn in place yet you haven't done that yet <sighs> okay so Bodice and skirt body are now sewn together and it's looking, <laughs> if I step way back, it is looking fairly uh, dress like and I'm actually quite impressed. Look how, look how straight that, that seam is. I never get them straight. I'm normally absolutely terrible at doing that. Um, my only concern is that it looks like there's a lot of flappy around the front, sort of like extra skirt. Um, I probably just cut it out wrong, um, did the pattern wrong. Uh, I mean, I can fix that later when it's all done. I can probably pin those out of place. It's just, it's just bugging me because I'm like, oh, why didn't I get that perfectly right? So the next step is, as you can see, the linen canvas is still 
there and that's not gonna be nice next to the skin so lining for bodice next if i if i look frazzled and the lighting's different it's because this took me many hours because i'm very very bad at hand sewing so uh the bodice lining has been oh i just got text messages i covered my whole screen i do this on the phone i'm very 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 high tech anyway so the lining for the bodice is pinned into the top and it's sewn in place along the bottom not very well this is where i really let myself down my sewing is my hand stitching is very bad uh, i've also clipped the bottom of the bodice and the bottom of the lining just so that this seam sits better i'm debating whether when it's finished i might add another panel along it just to sort of Neating it up extra, maybe, maybe or not. I still got to deal with the extra flat, but I can't deal with that until I sort out the raw edges of this because obviously, like this, uh, it looks a little bit untidy, a bit messy. So <laughs> I was hoping it would go poof, but uh, not quite. So, what I've got is long strips, and this is how they did bias binding without bias binding machines, and um. Literally, right side to right side. I'm gonna sew it in place along there and then fold over. So once it's uh, pinned, I will probably do a video of me sewing it and then that will be all, all covered and it will, it will look nice and tidy and I will Finally, I thought I was doing so well, and then I made a million and one mistakes and had to go back and unpick them. Such is so in life. <laughs> okay, so this is this is where I've got to so far. I had hoped to be finished by now, but as you can see from the general demeanour, things have not gone well for Jess. Uh, so I didn't film any of me doing the bias binding which you can see is around the collar, it's down the sides. I mean it looks nice uh, from a distance and then you get close and you realise that some bits are sticking up, some bits haven't folded down properly and um, I got so so frustrated when doing it that I just I got so angry and so upset when doing it, nothing was going right, my neighbours were being loud, like I couldn't focus on anything, so I was like, <laughs> if I film this, I look like a crazy person, so I've resorted to sort of, I've managed to do it, it's looking fairly like nice at the moment, I'm quite happy with how it's turned out, it's, the skirt's so long and it's looking quite uh, sadly there's a million and one mistakes in it but I mean it is my first time doing it so it is to be expected um these bits here so there was still like a flappy bit either side as I'm demonstrating <laughs> um so what I've done is I've pinned it up at the front for now so I'm gonna have to slip stitch that in place tidy off some threads and the next step if I turn it here is because it's going to be like held in place here with eyelets, uh, what I need to do is I need to make the eyelets. So I'll be getting a needle, a knitting needle, and just sort of stabbing merrily away. <laughs> and then I'll need to sew the buttonholes, which, well, that'll be my first time trying that out. So that'll be fun. Um, and then hopefully it should be finished enough for me, I oh know, I say that, finished enough, I've got bottom hem to do, and then, then it will be finished enough that I can put it on and see what it looks like with my smock underneath it, sort of, but other than that, I, I'm quite proud of how that's turned out, it's looking pretty, looking pretty good for the most part. Uh, improvements could be made the next time I try out this pattern, including me um, not just... I, I must have just 
done pattern pieces wrong. Sounds like something I do. I tend to just sort of be like, this is fine in the moment. And then, dear watcher, it turns out to not be fine. <laughs> I will see you back when I have some buttonholes. So this is how I'm making my eyelets. The extremely <laughs> this precise and uh, official method of stabbing it with a darn needle and then making the hole bigger with a knitting needle. So I've got a nice round even hole and then oh and I pull my thread up. I'm gonna whip stitch all the way around the edge of the hole. <laughs> So, as you can see, this is the result. Come on, focus. You get two. Actually, I've done this whole side now, I think. Pull out of it. They just end up looking like slight little dandelions or fireworks on the side. And then when you flip it over, you can see you've made the cutest little eyelets. And then with that, it can be laced up. The side, I'm really proud of those because I... Come on, focus! How hard is it to focus? No, I'm proud of that. I'm not very good at hand sewing and those have turned out really nicely. So, just... Uh... Oh, gosh. How many more to go? That's four down. It's four sides. 16 more to go. And then uh, just the hem left to finish after that. <laughs> oh, I'm dizzy now. So, eyelets have been done beautifully, I might add, if I'm not going to toot my own horn. And this is it. This is my Tudor kirtle done with my smock underneath. And um, I think most surprisingly is uh, it doesn't feel very heavy. It's very heavy working with it, with all this wool. But the dress itself doesn't feel heavy. The weight can be felt in the skirt, but that just sort of holds it in place nicely. It's good for swishing. Look at it go. <laughs> I'm too excited about it swishing, but yeah. I mean, there's a few faults here and there, but um, I think for a first attempt, look at that, look how gorgeous that is. I'm so proud of that. So beautifully done. Thank you, thank you, cameraman, thank you. But yeah, I can't help but be really happy with how this turned out. I think it's a good length as well. You feel like this is a practical garment for doing anything outside. I mean, I'd probably have to get a bit used to it. It sort of feels a bit weird on the shoulders, but that's probably because I cut it out badly. But yeah, I am extremely proud and happy with my Tudor kirtle. It's got a good shape. What a... Good luck, ready for the runway. But yes, and that is how to make a Tudor 